Hello, hello, hello. it's Howard from Hell, 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 and welcome to today's video, the technical overview of the Hell, 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 as well as the Epoch Pre, 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 and the Buffer. So here, so here we, we go. go. We are, we are going, going to turn, turn out, out heavily today. today. If you, you are uncomfortable with learning out, then I would advise you to skip, skip to the link over here and watch our introduction video where I actually play the guitar. But if, but if you, you are, are a nerd, nerd what to know, know about circuit, circuit capacitors, JPEG, and transistors, and block diagrams, then, then stick, stick with, with us, us and, and watch, 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 and view, and, view, and, and learn, learn, and learn, learn, learn about, about, about the Bell 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 Pock Pock Lux, 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 Fasten your seatbelt. Here we go. 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 All that kind of stuff, yada, yada, yada. So I thought today uh, we would demystify that a little bit and make that not so much an abstraction in your head. Now, if you own Echoplexes and you're kind of, uh, you're more geeky that way, or you're a pedal designer, I know, I'm looking at you, um, then you know, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about already. And you'll probably comment below and tell me all the ways that I'm wrong. Um, so you can make your own video if you want, but, um, for everyone else that doesn't, uh, uh, hasn't been too exposed to the technical details, I thought I'd go over that with you. I thought you might be interested in that and it'll kind of give you a little bit of a view on what I mean when I say it's exactly like the circuit. So we have a block diagram here, which shows the block diagram for the Billy Pock Deluxe, which coincidentally, actually not coincidentally, is virtually the same block diagram as the Echoplex EP3, obviously very intentionally. So I'm just gonna kind of walk through that with you. It's a pretty simple diagram, so and there will be no quiz on this, so don't worry. Just enjoy and follow along. Um, so up here, we have the guitar input to the circuit, and this is the preamp, and it says JFET 22 volts right there. So this is what people are talking about when they're saying, oh, the EP3 Echoplex preamp, and there's all these pedals out there do the preamp, preamp this and preamp that. They're talking about this little guy here. And this is just a block diagram, doesn't represent the actual circuit. We're gonna take a look at that though in, in the next scene. And uh, so the preamp is JFET. And um, as you see, there's two lines emanating from it. The first line goes to the mixer and then out. And then the second line, goes to the record level, and then through a bunch of stuff. So uh, this is exactly the architecture of the EP3 and exactly the architecture of the Belly Pock Deluxe. And uh, I felt it was important to structure it exactly this way uh, in our attempt to uh, make the Deluxe uh, behave as much like an EP3 as possible. So um, when it comes out to the mixer circuit here, um, it blends between the delayed signal and your preamp only signal and then out. And that's a fairly primitive resistor and pot-based uh, circuit. Uh, we produced it exactly so that it uh, affects the sound in, in a similar way. Um, one point I want to make, though, about the preamp, I've seen comments before about people uh, saying, oh, I wish I could turn the preamp off and this and that. Well, you can't turn the preamp off. I mean, you could technically, but you wouldn't want to because it's, let's not call it the preamp, let's call it the driver circuit. Uh, a delay pedal needs a driver circuit, otherwise it gets loaded down, there's no gain, and it's just not gonna work very well because you have to split your guitar signal out to feed uh, the delay and also 
uh, out through the mixer. And if you don't have a driver's circuit of some sort there, um, it's just not going to work properly. So you could argue you want a different type of driver's circuit, one that's more transparent or more of this or that. Uh, but anyway, of course, with the Bell Epoch Deluxe, we're trying to make it uh, respond as much like a Echoplex as possible. So here we have the JFET preamp. Okay, let's follow the chain going down here. It hits the record level uh, control. And uh, so what you see right here is this uh, is a volume control, essentially, that says how hot is your guitar signal going to feed the rest of the chain. So let's kind of follow that chain through real quick here. Uh, the first thing it hits is a record amplifier. And on the Billy Pock Deluxe, it's reproduced exactly like the EP3. Um, and this record amplifier is, uh, the whole circuit is discrete. Uh, through hole components and uh, discrete transistors and JFET. So the JFETs up here, uh, the record amp has two NPN transistors, silicon transistors um, in a particular circuit arrangement. And the intention of that on the Echoplex is to drive the record head. So we don't have a record head. What we have is a digital delay line. Um, but we reproduce the record amp, even though we don't really need to because the, the digital delay chip can handle, uh, doesn't need a stronger signal. But what I'm doing is trying to reproduce the tone and the response of it. So uh, in place of the record head and the playback head, we have a digital delay line. So we come through and the signal gets delayed and then it comes out back to the analog domain. And now it hits an analog limiter circuit. And this is not part of the EP3. Uh, but what I wanted to do was do as much of the processing of the sound in the analog domain as possible. So rather than uh, doing a s limiter saturation circuit inside the digital delay chip, I chose to do it in the analog realm, which is a little bit more expensive and a little bit more cumbersome to do, but I wanted to get that sound. So um, so we have um, the analog limiter, then it hits the playback amplifier, and uh, that's also an NPN silicon transistor-based uh, gain stage, and... This gain stage has a lot of gain because um, the playback head from magnetic tape is a very weak signal, probably weaker than your guitar strings and your pickups, because uh, they, they the 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 playback and record heads on a on a tape recorder are essentially like a pickup; they're a coil with wire around it. Um, anyway, so here we have the playback amplifier, and then it comes back out to the mixer, and then you can adjust the mixer for the relative level, and it goes out. But at the same time, it also gets split out and it goes to the feedback control, which is called echo sustain on the panel. And it comes all the way back and gets reintroduced into the record amp. So that's where your repeats happen. And this part of the circuit is where a lot of the magic is and where the character of a delay pedal comes through is this repeat circuit. So you notice a couple things from this circuit here. It doesn't go back into the preamp. So the preamp is only your first time you play this, your guitar. Um, but as it repeats through, you know, the first, second, third, et cetera, repeats, it's only in this loop. And the other thing you notice is that the record level does not inform that loop, how hot the loop is. The feedback or echo sustain control is what does that. So that determines how hot this loop is. The record level just sets how hard your guitar signal initially hits the loop and feeding into it. So this is important and good to know as you're using a Bellpock Deluxe, or the Echoplex for that matter, on, uh, on what it's gonna do. Because if, if you got repeats going and they're like circulating through and you're hearing it and you adjust this control, you're not gonna hear any difference. Uh, but if you could adjust this control, it's gonna make a big difference. Um, and then the other thing you see is the, the signals repeating through the loop here. Every time it's going through its record amp and through the digital delay line, and through limiter and playback amp. So, and these are like discrete transistor. They're like gain or distortion boxes. In fact, uh, uh, they're not voiced for distortion, but um, the playback amplifier, I could turn that into a, a bitch and fuzz pedal if I wanted to, just change some parts. Um, it's a negative feedback amplifier. So uh, if I take the negative feedback out, it is hella loud and hella distorted. Um, and the original Bell Epoch, Actually, its preamp is more based on this because a um, bunch of reasons. We don't need to get into too much here. Voltage scalable, and it just was the appropriate thing for that particular pedal. Um, so that's the, kind of the block diagram. What's happening in the digital delay line? So 
uh, obviously, uh, that's where the signal gets delayed. So its main job is just to take the signal, wait for a while, and then spit it back out. And the wait is anywhere from 80 milliseconds to 800 milliseconds. Um, and like I said, we're trying to do as little as possible in the digital domain. So uh, we're trying to actually, most of the sound of the pedal is through this, all this analog goodness that it's circulating through. But there are a few functions that do happen in the digital do domain. And besides delaying the signal, um, the modulation also occurs here. And um, we have from random tape orbital modulation to specific like deluxe memory man bass modulation and some of the other things that we'll get into. Um, and uh, 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 so the expression pedal, when you plug that into the pedal, is basically controlling parameters within the digital delay domain. So, for example, when you use the expression pedal in volume mode, you aren't controlling any of the volumes here or here or here. You're actually controlling an independent volume that's right here. And it's kind of like setting the volume of the repeats at the playback amplifier. So that's a whole nother color you get uh, from manipulating that with the expression pedal. And uh, the six uh, echo programs are based in the digital domain. So that's the block diagram. And uh, what I'm gonna do to kind of further dive into this a little bit, let's, let's take a peek at the actual Echoplex schematic. And uh, it'll expand some of these blocks out. And we're not gonna dive into this too much, and no quiz, like I said. I just thought I'd share this with you because I thought you might find it interesting. So. Uh, if you're yawning, getting tired, and you want to go find a funny YouTube, you know, feel free to. Uh, I'm just, I'm just doing this anyway. So, all right, let's go and look at the schematic for the actual EP3 Echoplex. Hey, okay, so new scene here, and even more diving down into the nerdery of the EP3. So, right here, uh, I have the schematic for the Echoplex EP3, and right here, we're gonna go over this in a second, and there will be a quiz. And over here we have an actual EP3, and I've taken it apart for your benefit so you can see this. Um, here's the guts of the EP3 as far as some of the gain stages. And, uh, you know, let me flip this guy over here. Here's the controls, uh, here's the tape, and here's, uh, you can zoom in on this. So here's the, the record and playback head. So when you change the lay time, you're literally doing that. And uh, I mentioned this in the last video, but the minimum delay time is as close as the record and playback hits can get to each other. So it, uh, there you go, right there. Uh, mechanical, pretty cool though, huh? So um, yeah, let's take a look at this. So, so you know, all this talk on all these pedal ads and everything, the Echoplex preamp, well, there it is, and it's non-glory, it's kind of unceremonious. An old circuit, right? Got some orange drop 225s and some stuff here. Uh, we've got the record amplifier here, so, um, and you look over here, and you can see how they did stuff back in the old days. You know, some parts weren't even on a circuit board, they just used that as the connector going from the jacks to the circuit board. Um, but, uh, so this is the echo sustain knob, and it, on our pedal, um, the deluxe, the echo sustain is in circuit-wise exactly the same place. Uh, this is the record level pot, and on the Echoplex, you had to use a screwdriver to get in there and adjust it, because they intended for you to adjust the signal noise ratio of the tape. It wasn't really meant to be something you messed around with as you played, but of course, on the Deluxe, you can actually use it as a tone shaping tool and a gain tool, because that's exactly what it is. And we're gonna take another look at that on the schematic. And this is the mixer control, or echo volume. And um, that's what uh, the control on the Deluxe is. So yeah, in case you've never seen the inside of a real Echoplex, uh, that's what it is. And let's keep going here. There is a motor. So we don't have a motor in the Deluxe or a transformer. And there's a little bit more of the amplification circuitry there. There's the power supply. And, uh, you know, we've condensed all that down into this package on the Deluxe. And, and so all the other mechanical stuff, the tape transport stuff, replaced by this little white circuit board. And uh, so what I did was I took the schematic and I started by making a breadboard of it. And that's kind of it right there. And spent months last winter just getting it up and uh, on the breadboard and 
tuning it and tuning it and tuning it, comparing it to this, listening to my recordings, putting on Led Zeppelin, you know, listening to Tommy Bolin and Brian May and, and listening to those recordings and playing the guitar through it again and trying different capacitors and different things um, while keeping the circuit as close as possible. So uh, why don't you join me down here? Let's look at this this printout here. Um, this is the actual schematic for an EP3 um, serial number this to this. Uh, you can Google this. This is not a secret find that I had or anything. You can just Google it, and they'll actually give you, you can download a uh, document that has a service manual for it that has all the versions of the EP3. And um, But I thought I'd kind of go through this with you so you can kind of get a maybe a feel for it um, of what we've done. So I, you've heard me say that there's a power supply, it's 22 volts, and we've reproduced that part too. So on the actual alkaplex, it's this block right here. That's the power supply area. Plug in your wall, there's a transformer, and it goes through a bridge rectifier, which turns the AC of the wall into DC. And there's a bunch of filtering stages here. Those are filter caps. And this guy right here, it's called a Zener diode, 22 volts. And... That's what makes the 20 volt supply right there. And we're doing the exact same technique on the Epoch Deluxe. Because I found in my experimentation on the breadboard that doing it this way, um, using a shunt regulator, it's not as efficient uh, because it's basically, you're overshooting the voltage and then it's it's draining off through its diode. So it's always kind of sucking juice. Uh, not too bad, 200 milliamps max, uh, whether you're playing or not. But that's part of the, the fuel thing. Anyway, so, that's, that's, so that sets up the 22 volts that feeds all the gain stages. And we're doing something very similar without the wall stuff. Um, you know, I'm doing a different technique here to get 9 volts up to 27 volts. And then we're pushing it back to 22 in a similar way here. Um, but when you plug your guitar in, here's the input jack. And here's the JFET. So, you know, once again, when you talk about the EP3 bass preamp pedal, there's not much there. There's a JFET and a few parts, and they're very important parts, and, and we've reproduced that in the deluxe. But that's really what we're talking about here. Um, and the power supply is really important because the power supply is what powers this gain stage. And uh, let's follow the gain stage. Let's say we only had a preamp or we had the Epoch Pre. It hit the preamp, and then it's going to go up. I'm looking at the schematic upside down, so a little difficult. So the signal comes out here, and it goes up here into the mixer stage. And so the mixer stage uh, is, is a resistive mixer stage, and so that's what's going on in the Deluxe as well. And on the Epoch Pre, um, what I've done is instead of using regular volume, regular volume control, I'm using the same mixer stage because uh, when you experiment with the circuit, you realize... Part of the sound is the way this loads it down. And um, so on the Epoch Pre, we actually have the same uh, mixer stage, but it's mixing between your dry signal and nothing. In place of the nothing, um, or the nothing on the delay pedals, the, the delay. Uh, but in the Epoch Pre, the delay part is, is replaced um, by some circuits uh, that sort of mimic the loading that would occur there. Anyway... So what happens is your your preamp amplifies that signal and your dry signal goes straight to the mixer, but then it also goes down here to the record level pot. And once again, the record level pot on your Bell Epoch Deluxe is identical to this. And then it hits this guy here. Uh, the, I'm, I'm kidding. There's no quiz on this. Uh, we're not going to talk about this in detail. But there's two transistors and... So the point I want to make to you here is the record level pot is basically a pre-gain control to a discrete transistor um, gain stage. You know, not that different than a lot of the dirt pedals you may you may uh, circuits that are out there and fuzz pedal circuits. Um, and this is the record amplifier, and it drives the record head. But we don't have a record head on the deluxe, so that's replaced with some circuitry I put in there that I've developed to basically allow it to interface with. Um, the digital delay line, but this part is as close to accurate as I can get it uh, with transistors and everything. And then you jump up here, and um, 
there's the playback head. Once again, I'm looking at this upside down. Here it is. And um, so this would be the output of the digital delay line in our case. Think of the block diagram that I showed you just a moment ago. And it goes through the playback amplifier here, which is super high gain. Um, it's a negative feedback amp, and if I were to take the negative feedback out, like I said, it'd just be like all out crazy fuzz pedal. And then that joins up with the dry signal here at the mixer stage. So, um, so all these things I've circled, you know, are, are pretty much reproduced and then finely tuned for the new environment on the Belly Pock Deluxe. You know, this circuit's a bias oscillator that's for tape. We don't need this in the digital domain. Um, but yeah, you can, if you want to, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you can download schematic and study it further. Um, and you'll, and if you'll find that, uh, that's, that's a lot what we're doing on our pedal. And, uh, so I just wanted to kind of, um, uh, go through that with you cause I thought you might think it's cool or, uh, that's what I do. Um, that's what I did with this pedal. So Echoplex, Belly Pock Deluxe, um, yeah, we've kind of crammed it all down into here, you know. Uh, but most of the space for the Echoplex is for the mechanical stuff. The one thing I didn't reproduce, though, there's this really handy pocket. Once it's back in the cabinet, there's no pocket now. It's just, but this is actually a little pocket. And uh, when I used to use an EP3 back in the day, it was really handy because this thing goes in the box and you have a lid for it. You know, I'd put spare strings in there, a slide, a, a string winder, maybe a guitar cloth and maybe some other contraband that might show up in there too. You know, this is 19 late seventies. So I'm not sure what would show up in there, but it would be stored in this pocket. You know, you put your weed in it. Um, and, uh, that's about it. We're going to do some more videos where I actually play the guitar again and maybe make, make some music happen with this thing. But today we're going to nerd out and just go into a little bit of this. Um, to explain what's kind of going on under the hood here and how uh, we've um, gone through and tried to make this as accurate as possible. So that's it for now. We'll come back at you with some guitar playing and Bill Epoching in a deluxe fashion. And until then, uh, keep your head up and keep your fingers moving. All right, peace. That ends this video, video for, today. for today. So don't, so don't forget, forget to, to like, 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 and subscribe, and, subscribe. and, and follow. follow. Follow us here on YouTube, and, YouTube. and go on over to, to Facebook. Facebook. And there's also and Twitter. And last but not least, Instagram. At Calibred and Instagram. And also keep an account at Kitty Caster Music, where you can follow me and my shenanigans, pictures of guitars, and clips of pedals, and what I might be working on next after this project. You never know what you'll find there. So that's about it for now. And I will move on through. Bye. Bye. Number nine, 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 number